I'm going to make our little band here around this katana. The game res seems to be the more useful part of it. I've just duplicated this model for the blade. I'm going to delete it, delete everything else that I'm not using there. Make sure I'm not missing anything either. Make sure you're all turning in on time too, okay? Um, keep in mind, okay, uh, these turn ins, these turn ins are work in progress turn ins, okay? They're there for, for everyone else to see your progress in the week and to critique you on what you've done so far, okay? Please don't be nervous about this or anxious. Please don't think that since your work is not done that you can't turn anything in. Because that's all that we need. That's all that we're looking for. We're looking for what you have done. Okay? So please, please, please do not turn in late. It's very important that we have your work in whatever capacity you have done. All right, so right now I've made this model. There's a little bit of an arc here, and I've uh, what I've done is I've duplicated this blade mesh, deleted everything below it. I have, I, if you hold D, you, you have a quick pivot. So I've, I've clicked on it. You know, you can readjust your pivot to different parts of the model. And I could say, hey, I want you to grab this face and move it along that face. But I think that what's lining up with my model here, since my blade is at a mild curve, I'm just gonna hold D on this edge right here, because it seems to be the straightest one, the, the, the best way to approach this. And I'm just gonna reorient my stuff to that edge and just slide my geometry along that edge loop. And I want a little bit of overlap between both of my shapes here too, okay? I don't know, actually, I don't know if I really need this uh, this edge loop up here. So I'll just delete that. All right. Now I can grab this, oh boy. Now I can grab this edge, do an extrusion. Let's push it out for that, uh, that little beam there, the little, uh, the little band. Okay, and uh, truthfully, I, I need this this shape usually does end before the handle piece, so we're gonna make sure that that does happen too. That it's going to end abruptly, right there. Um, let's get some bevels on here though. We want to bevel this shape out. That way, uh, you know, both for the game res and for the high res. going to be useful for both meshes. And this, this way, that, that interior bevel, once again, makes this model seem like that edge, like this blade is going inside of this band. band. We have to have that kind of relationship there. Soften my edges, we'll see what it looks like. All right, not too bad. And this should be pretty useful for both my high res and my game res. So I'm gonna delete my history and freeze my transforms. I should actually have some UVs to work with here too. Once again, though, Anastasia, if you like, if you have something you need me to look at, no matter the level of completion, please don't have any anxiety in showing me your work. I'm not trying to rip anybody a new one. I'm just trying to help you all out in whatever way I can. That's my banner, or my little band. If I, uh, let's rename this guy. Save myself some time here. Band underscore low. Uh, UVs of this guy should be pretty much there truthfully, because uh, this band shape is 
exactly the same as the blade shape that I had. So I can actually grab these guys and pull them up. If I'm working with an already UV mesh, then guess what? These guys are already UV too, pretty much. Just unfold. Nope. He didn't like that. I don't know what's wrong with my unfold to it. It used to be doing everything right. It's just unfold 3D. Is that what's going on? Why? Why do you hate me so much? Okay. Unfold 3D is being naughty. I'm just going to unfold with my smooth tool. Relax you out. Unfold. Wow. This, this shape's probably backwards. One of these is doing something bad. What's going on here? It doesn't like my extrusions, I believe. Um, let me isolate this view and see what we're working with here. Oh, it left an interior face. I didn't need that interior face, brother. Good golly. I just extruded the face. There shouldn't have been any face behind it. Okay, so that's looking better. Let's see if the unfold work tool works. Yeah, there we go. So that problem was simply just my geometry then. Now we're here. We have little bevels on each side. This is an extrusion. But we'll we'll make that a bevel. Okay, so that's the low one. We duplicate this shape. Add it to the high. And we'll make this one the high one. run a smooth operation on it to make sure that we're getting uh, some smoothing action in there. But I probably need to make sure I have some holding edges here too. So let's put some holding edges. This. Maybe we could put some holding edges right here to get some, uh, some sharp cutoff lines. Give this just a little bit of a metallic appearance. Let's see what this looks like. There we go. That's holding my shape there. Not looking too great on shapes over here though. I need to uh, grab my bevels here on these guys. Oh, no, it's just that one actually. Just the blade tip area. It's not looking too sexy. Maybe I might just, uh, I'm just going to bevel this guy. A nice little tight bevel. Come on. Well, looking better. So this guy is going to receive my smoothing operation here. Let me soften the edges, make sure we're not doing anything wrong. I'm going to smooth this mesh out. Uh, two divisions should probably work for this guy because uh, he's pretty light on geometry. So we can suffer a little bit of extra geometry for that guy. And that's my band. Actually, I'm going to take this back and let's... Uh, I need to grab both of my both of my meshes here and uh, reduce them down. Make sure I got both of them selected and isolated. OK. 
Okay, good. I need to give myself a, a little bit of room for my handle. I forgot to do that. My uh, my handle guard. So I think that'll do the job right there. I'll have to adjust my UVs a little bit. No worries. Still want uh, a little bit of a bevel here too on my game res. But I won't need any uh, holding edges or any of that stuff, okay? So let me, uh, I'm gonna hide my, my low, do that smooth again on my high. So now my smooth is uh, to where I want it to be for the high res. Go back to the low. And uh, last shape we need to take care of, I think, uh, you know, I need to, uh, See, I got some hard edges here. Soften that out. Uh, let's get that. Let's get a the handle grip around this thing. When when we make updates changes, do we update the pictures and presentation Sketchfab and ArtStation and delete old ones? Yes, per milestone, uh, Anthony. Okay, so don't um, don't delete your milestone one. Just have like one milestone one presentation shot there, and then all of your milestone two work. Just keep replacing it if you have new new presentation shots for milestone two. Okay, just uh, just replace those milestones. Don't replace. Uh, Replace your images only within the milestone. Don't replace old milestones. So in at the end of the month, I should see one presentation shot per milestone, basically. Okay. So just kind of give yourself some slots there and just replace what's uh, replace what's to come. Okay. Um, reference here showed a pretty complicated shape. Not, not super complicated, but mildly complicated. We have uh, a few different shapes getting slapped together here. It's kind of hard to see it. So let me see if I can replicate this shape. And I don't think there's really any faking what's happening here. And actually we have like another band around this handle. You know, I, I wasn't looking at this before, but we have like another band around the handle guard. So, and that looks like it's welded together. So I may need to do a little bit of that action. I might do some skirting geometry, maybe. Some uh, skirting on the floating. So what I'm gonna, the way that I'm gonna approach this shape is uh is in like a pizza formation where I where I like only model like one quarter of it. We'll count the sides too to make sure that I have an even amount of pizza slices. And I'll also I'll model this thing in a, an exact cylinder and just give it a mild stretch to get that uh um, get the shape that I want there. So let me see. We have uh, one, two, three, four. I would say we have four of these deep uh, designs on each side. So I basically need like an eight-sided um, cylinder, which I believe is the default, right? Eight sides, 20. You're crazy. Crazy, Maya. It's loading up with 20 sides. Oh, okay, my pivot is off. I need to reset it. Um, I just need to go back to world or something. Sometimes your pivot may do that. Definitely make sure you correct that. Okay. So eight sides is what we said. 
Let's do 16. That way we know that each pizza slice is gonna be two corners. You know, maybe if we work in uh, sec in uh, divisions of eight, then that's gonna be the most beneficial, right? So what's the next one, 24? Let's see how many divisions. We'll have uh, three faces per side, I believe, instead of two. Um, I think that's smooth enough. I think that'll get the job done. So let's do that. Um, 24 sided face, 24 sided cylinder. Uh, we'll, we'll scale this down so it makes it easier for us to grab this. Lose all the perspective there on that. I'm gonna grab those three faces, hold shift and select everything else. And that's gonna be my little working area. Actually, I'm probably better off using a pipe. So let's do a pipe instead. Because there is a, a little interior to these shapes here that I want to take advantage of. So let's do a 24 division pipe. If someone told you there wasn't any math in modeling, then they were lying to you extensively. I'm going to improve my thickness. Let's work with that. Uh, there we go. I'm content with that, I believe. No, I'm not. A little bit thinner. We're going to stretch it out a little bit more, so don't worry. Um, now I can grab this shape and scale it down. My selection intact. And work with the topology that I have here. My little pineapple wedge. Yeah, pivots do fight. They'll give you, they'll give you some resistance there. It's gonna happen. Okay, so this is the this is the shape range that we're working with that we're playing around with right now. Now I'm not gonna use this as my uh, as the actual handle grip here. I'm just gonna use it as a reference shape. That way I know where my angles need to be. Let me grab, uh, we're gonna, I'm gonna grab some cylinders here. We're gonna kind of reverse, we're gonna do subtractive topology to create this interior. I'm working really small here too. Let's, uh, I'm gonna enlarge my pie slice. That makes it easier for me to make my cylinders and everything. I'll just shrink this guy down when I'm done making it. Okay, so I'm going, to, I'm going to kind of section off where that hole is. Let's uh, let's make sure that my cylinder is not too dense. Uh, we'll go down to 10 maybe. That way, you know, I'm not making like a, a really dense piece of model. It would be better for me to start this model off as a game res and, and smooth it out as opposed to a high res. So, I mean, just make sure you're saving your stuff as you go here. And I probably actually want to rotate this guy around just a little bit here. Let me see if I could do something. Let me put like a little modeled in geometry to show me like how thick I want my lips to be. And those will double up too, because I'm going to have little lips there for each shape. Put my wireframe on. Now if I line this up pretty good too, that's going to help my model out a little bit. So line it up with that lip. Okay. Maybe drop it down a little bit so I can do some extruding out that last shape. That'll probably be a little bit easier. Okay, so something like that. I probably should have left some kind of uh, 
radial shape in here. Oh, my, my pivot is still centered, actually. I wonder. I wonder if I can direct my topology over to that point and just kind of extrude it. I want to make like a vertice or something for me to snap to. And that would be a great place to put it. Collapse my face. Merge face to center. This is my little pokey object here. Just gonna try to guesstimate this a little bit. do here is I'm just going to find this shape here, freeze transformations. I'm going to hold D and snap my stuff over here to this vertice. And this way, when I duplicate it, I can just rotate it around like this and line it up the same way on the other side too. That way I have equal distancing and everything like that. All that good jazz, right? Okay, and now I need, I have those, like, uh, those pin, those, uh, those little round points there. And I just want to make a cylinder that com connects those two together now. So, let me try to make something like that. This guy might be able to rock 20 or uh, maybe 15. Let's see, what, let's see what this looks like. I think if you stay to just the, the regular scaling and not like individual pieces. See, I'm scaling at a pivot again. Just reset the world. to make, I don't want to scale this cylinder to be oblong in any way. I just want to use less of the cylinder for that shape. So this is why I may need to kind of come in and change up how many divisions I have based off of that stuff. But right now I'm just, I'm just trying to reverse engineer this shape. I think that's Kind of what I want. Actually, no. I want to be a little bit thinner. It needs to. I, I think it bulges in just a little bit more. That looks good right there. Something like that. So let me increase my resolution here to support like an equal topology. I think this is a good shape right here. Like this looks like it's even lined up a little bit. It looks like it's lined up pretty good to those shapes there. Let me scale it down. Kind of line it up a little bit too. With those other cylinders that I made. Alright. Mild movements here. If I was working on the same axis, this, this would be a lot faster. Okay, that's the shape there. I have this stuff started out. Um, I think I need a shape for my ring here too, so let's make a higher... Let me just duplicate this. I want the same kind of roundness going on over here. Duplicate that shape. Move you around in here a little bit. And just reuse it. 
This is going to be my interior hole, so. Perfect. All right, I have my shape set up here. I'm going to combine these shapes together now. I think I can get rid of this guy. I believe. Actually, I'm not going to get rid of him. I'm just going to move him out of the way. So freeze, transform, delete history. Just scooch him out. Let me delete the stuff that I want to keep over on this side. I don't want to lose any of my reference on that. That should do it. <laughs> cool. Now I can move this guy out the way. Okay. Oh, I'm just gonna keep using, I'm gonna keep this guy here. He's not bothering me as much as I thought he would. I'm sure we all know somebody like that, right? Oh wait, I'm grabbing the wrong stuff here. I want this shape to be like this. Come inwards. And this shape over here. Oh, I'm grabbing too much. Careful. I didn't do any of that with this shape, did I? Oh, okay. Delete this. Oops. See. Grab him too much still. There we go. I don't need you either. Cool. And, uh. Just grab all of this. Delete you. Grab him too much again. That. And that. And if I move you out the way, I hope you guys see what I'm doing here. Um, these shapes, I need to reverse the faces. Mesh reverse. This guy's doing the right thing. This guy's doing the right thing. I'm gonna try to drag this down and line it up even closer now. Get as close as I possibly can. Now this vertice can come on over here, right there. Merge you together. Jeez, why are these so different? It's like this guy was up modeled on some kind of edge or something. Or angle. We'll figure it out. It's close enough, I'm just gonna merge the vertices on those together. That's and uh this shape right here, I'm just going to bridge. Bridge this as well. Now for me to straighten this out, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab this and uh, just scale it flat. Same thing with this edge loop here. That should straighten it out. Let's get the job done. Um, this edge is probably a little intense, I mean, I'm not sure what material this thing is, but it looks like it's kind of plasticky. So you don't want things to be too edgy. Give it a little bit of a bevel there. All right, so that's my interior shape. I'm looking a little thick in my opinion too, so I'm just gonna do something like this. You know what, we'll keep it thick and I'll bevel it. That'll probably shrink it down a little bit. Now, 
complete history. Let's push you back where you belong. Thicken you up so I can cut my shape out. In my efforts of making my, my little perfect pizza slice here, let me just extrude out some thickness. Let's, uh, see, I just need to raise this whole thing up. I like the thickness of the, of the first shape I had here. I'm just going to mildly be that same shape. So now, grabbing both sides here, extruding out. Using my thickness to reverse out like this. Until I find the thickness that I want angle doesn't look like it's fully lined up the way that I wanted it to. But you know what, I'll adjust that. No worries. We'll snap some of this stuff back. Okay, and I'll... Yeah, we'll leave it like this because I want to bevel it still. This is going to give me some good geometry to work with. Let me grab some edges here and try to line this up to that pie slice, because if I don't do this pie slice the right way and get things lined up perfectly, let me just line you up to this guy here. Nope, that's not what I wanted. There we go. Lined up with the edge. The edge is horrible. Let's try this edge. There we go. That one's lined up better. Push you in a little bit and scale you in like this. There we go. That should match my little pie slice going on there. So that that should be my interaction between my two shapes. In fact, uh, I probably want to. I'll deal with those when I get to it, truthfully. Let me get another cylinder started up here. 24 sides is what we used, right? Well, no. I just need something smoother. It's still... Let's just modify this shape. I think we can get this taken care of the right way here. Just add an edge loop in here. Get rid of these edge loops because they're keeping my model from smoothing the right way. Just insert edge loops with the shift key to round them out. I just want some more topology. I just feel really low about this shape lowly and, and sad. Does that seem okay? This guy needs to slide a little bit. Alright, this should work. Get the job done. to delete this geometry here. Still have my center, like the, well, I'm a little pivot point there, so we should still be good. But I can combine these two shapes together now and use this for my bridging. Bridge this guy. 
push this guy. I'm simply just like occupying an area right now. So that I can fill my holes. Use a bridge tool for that to start off with. Fill my hole here. Fill my other hole. And with my topology the way that it is, I can start thinking about where I want my stuff to be. So I might do something like this. Try to use the same geometry on both sides. And this is me just kind of planning out where I'm gonna triangulate my model. We want to use good geometry here, not bad geometry. Grab the wrong edge loops there. I think just sending all of this to a radial point won't be too bad. It's definitely going to mess up with the bevel, so I might need to extrude that instead. Okay, let's do something like this. That's that. And for any of these longer shapes and these really weird looking squares, you definitely want to make sure you're triangulating those the right way. Okay, so I think I like the way that that looks so far. I have to do that to the other side too. Middle, middle. I'm just kind of using memory right now to remember how exactly I did this. Between sides. I like to manually triangulate things. If you're used to triangulating things with the triangulate tool, you can do that. It's not always going to pick the best one for you though, so just make sure you're looking at the how that stuff's going to go. So that's one shape there. Anything else? I think I'm going to do those little dips in there once I get this all combined together. There's an extra shape in here too that's uh, going to mess with my circle. But I think it. I think it'd be better if we approach this circle as a whole first and then use that shape to, to cut it out again. Okay, so here's I think where we can kind of call this piece and, uh, and start duplicating it out. So I'm going to grab this shape. Uh, I need to switch the pivot over to my central point here. This is where I thought my, my little radius was. I'm going to rotate this guy around until I get my geometry to kind of match up with, uh, with where it used to be. Once again, since I started off with like an eight-sided shape or a... Um, know a dividend of eight or a multiple of eight then I should be this should line up now so I've rotated it once without clicking off the model after I duplicated it and I should be able to hit shift D and get a pretty decent application of that now it's not lining up perfectly my central point was kind of just guesstimated there Okay, but that's uh that's me working with that shape so far. You know what? I should I should probably bevel this stuff before I duplicate it. 
Try not to waste too much time with your things. So it would benefit me a lot more to get like my bevels in here. Start thinking about these things before you get too far with it. For my, my outside here, we do like an extrusion bevel because I have some triangles in there. I'm gonna pull it out a little bit and do an offset. Offset. There we go. Maybe a little bit more. Nice little bevel out there too. Now I'm not gonna worry about these guys because that may even just help me out uh, with my with my little cut-ins. So we'll see what that looks like when we get to it. But yeah, that's important too is for me to kind of set set things up that way. Now since I you know I saw my stuff there too and I saw that you know there was a mild intersection towards the end that was a little bit intense. Let's see. Let's see if I can put a number to this. Forty-five. Oh, I just said forty-five. Okay. That's not too bad. Let's go with 45. Just a mild intersection. And now, okay, so that's good. That 45 degree angle was not too bad at intersecting things. And I should be able to snap some stuff together pretty easily now. And I should be able to combine these guys together. Let's delete all this inside stuff. I don't, I'll just leave one. That way I, I still have that geometry there as my center pivot. All right. So let me, you know what, I'm, I'm getting an idea now. Let's try something else. I wanna move these guys out so I can do that little circular thing. Let's see if I can do this the right way. This might be pretty cool. So I'm gonna grab all of one side of that uh, intersection there. Where we have like a center pivot still. Okay, and just rotate it. Give myself just a little bit of a gap there. And I'll do the same for the other side now. Just give myself a little gap. And this is going to keep me, I'm doing this before I do any merge vertices because uh, I don't want those guys snapping together just yet. Okay, just do the same thing. Just rotate it since I have that center pivot there. If you have time today, I'll send it. If not, I can save it for tomorrow and keep working. Oh, sorry, I didn't see your stuff there, Anastasia. Um, well, yeah, we'll see if we have some time to look at that. I'm still kind of here. I mean, this might just be enough to uh, to explain my process on that. Um, if you feel like 
if you do you need a if you need some improved feedback on something um if you if you think that you you have like a a lot of feedback that's needed here we go let me just pull you out so you're not messing with my model here if you feel like they're like a i would you know, I would need to give you a long video for something, then, then I can handle it right here inside uh, Zoom. But if you think it's just a quick response that you need help with, then uh, then I can just handle you in Discord. It's up to you. Move you out of the way, freeze transforms, delete history. Now let's see if a, a merge vertice can handle this. Because there is some mild intersection here happening. You know what? I might be able to do... something like this, where I get a couple of things together here. Just grabbing like two edges together. Um, I could do the same thing for the other side, because they're pretty much lined up with each other, right? Grabbing too many edges, though. Making sure that I grab some of these guys together. And with this stuff set, no, nope. I hope I didn't. Did I extrude? No extrusion yet. Uh, just clicking on what looks good. So I'm gonna switch my pivot over to this edge. And then I could just scale, hopefully. Get these guys lined up a little bit closer. No, that's not working. Let's let's just see what a vertice snap will do. Merge vertices. Play with the threshold here. Whoa. Close it up. Just one, two, three. See, that's what I didn't want, though. I didn't want that. Oh boy. I think. I'm just going to have to go through and uh, snap these guys in manually. And that's going to take some time. So I can call it right here, guys, if you want. If you need any feedback, we can do that. Either way works for me. I sent my stuff to the Discord, so whatever you think is best after you looked at it. So I'm just highlighting the stuff and hitting G to repeat my action. And this is me just kind of snapping that stuff together. Okay. I'm going to save this.